And here to talk with us about the consequences of spreading euro-enhancement is Isabella Häuser, psychiatrist from the Charité Hospital here in Berlin, who is a regular guest on Tomorrow Today. Now, as soon as euro-enhancement pills will be developed with few side effects, people will not renounce them anymore. How do you judge that development? I think that's okay. If there, is no, if there are no side effects, I wouldn't know why you would not want these pills. Maybe because there's quite a lot of chemistry in them, lots of pharmaceuticals. They do something to your body you don't really know. Well, whatever you put into your mouth is a, is a chemical. I mean, even your, your, you know, really healthy foods are being by, uh, degraded into molecules, and that's chemistry. So, uh, I don't know. I think what you are actually a asking is whether this is a natural thing. Of course, it's not natural, no. But why would it be uh, somehow adversive if you are not living naturally? We don't live naturally at all. At night, we do switch on the lights, so we get out of the dark. Uh, we uh, turn on the heat when it gets cold outside. So we are living already in a highly unnatural environment. And I think it's, that is nothing you know, principally different with these new enhancements pills. Do we have to have something like doping tests at the entries of universities? Test students for doping? Well, I don't think so. Um, uh, I don't know what they will, you know, decide, but uh, I think it's something very different to sports doping because if you, if you do sports and dope yourself to increase your speed or your muscle power, that is not really important for mankind. You know, this is entertainment so that people can get entertained. That's the only reason. And so I'm pretty opposed to sports doping, mm -hmm. but I'm a little bit more lenient, if you will, if you would take a pill that is without side effects and uh, to improve your memory or your endurance power, you know, so that you can learn longer and so forth. But then you really have to hand out these pills for free, so everybody has the same chances, right? That's true. There's a big problem with, you know, the distribu just, uh, just distribution. Mm. Uh, so everybody should have access to it. That, I, I agree with that. And there's another big problem. Even I think, in my mind, it's a bigger problem. That is that one of coercion. Because if you get coerced into taking these pills, and if you don't want it, uh, then this is really a big problem. And um, so, so that has to be worked out uh, if we ever uh, are going to be having a more liberal mm -hmm. stance on so this. So we could actually turn into a society where people point at the others who do not take these pills and say, well, it's your own fault that you're stupid. Exactly. And that's a big problem, and that should not happen. And what do you think of the attitude that's behind this neuroenhancement? It's a society kind of which asks for more power, which asks to become faster and better and so on. Why don't we just take a break, sleep a bit more and so well, on? Well, you should sleep, of course. You should always have relaxed time and, uh, and sleep. But we're living in a society where the real power we have or we need is our brain power mm. this is what we need the brain our brain and now we are you know at a at a certain stage in the development where we might be able to enhance brain power and i think that's basically a great thing thanks a lot for the talk professor sure. isabella Häuser.